with and an argument you can never win. For Vipers, that person is URA that always seems to have their number. And that's the game that we have here tonight. Start times again, Premier League action. Arena Visions in Deji. URA hosts Vipers Sports Club. And it is one of numbers. When you look at the scores between these two teams, for those who keep tally, 34 times they have met. And URA have only been beaten six times by Vipers Sports Club and have won 16 times, including the reverse fixture. That is the daunting task that faces the table leaders who do have an opportunity to extend their lead at the very top of the table to nine points and more or less beginning to run away with it. Last six matches hosted here, URA has actually been victorious three times, two draws and one loss. For Vipers, they have scored nine goals and conceded 12. Can't they? inevitably today find a way to beat the underdog in this match that seems to have their number. My name is Jermaine Agessa, John Vianen Simbe sits in the commentary booth with me tonight for what promises to be a tantalizing encounter, not just as far as the competition is concerned for the sports on the table, but also as the race for the golden boot comes to a pitched favor. No doubt about that. Sasa Manzoki right there in your picture. And of course, uh, Stephen Desi Mukwala will be competing for the bragging rights in regards uh, to who carries the day as the top scorer in the league. So that should be another tantalizing um, encounter between those two. But more importantly, it's going to be the fight. Hilary Mukundane skips past Cheyune. Hilary Mukundane and takes the shot himself. Selfish, you could say in one book. But well, he deserved the chance. He earned the chance to go ahead and take a crack at it. Yeah, this yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. look at the movement he's putting on here. And uh, the URA fans applaud the process that the team is coming up with as the ball was brought on through. And Fabian, for a moment there, seemed to have been caught in two minds. He nearly, nearly created a howler. Yeah, of course. Sir. And I think that uh, one of the things that uh, has defined this season, Fabian Mutombora, is not look the short goalkeeper that uh, he was um, one, two seasons ago. Somehow you realize that uh, his movement and his position because he was well struck from that distance. And now Fabian makes a mistake in that clearance. Nearly got blocked out here by Cromwell or Romeo. Fabian really needs to settle out. He wouldn't want to be the player that commits the mistakes that could cost the team here. Yeah, that is true. And already he has, he's been um, uh, culpable already. We've seen him and in previous games where he's he can pose a great danger. Bobosi in intense concentration and the ball comes up. It looked like it took a handball, but eventually it settles down for the captain. Halid Luwadina threatened earlier on to take the lead and eventually it takes the man that puts on the armband to lead the team forward and strike open for them. In just that moment there, the unity, the brotherhood, the discussion between the Venoms on how potent they should get here. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the table leader. That is the team vying for the title. Yeah, you could see the persistence there in trying to ensure that that ball crossed the line. But you can see also the tactic that uh, Vipers has uh, deployed there as uh, those corner kicks are, are, are delivered. They make it very difficult for the defenders to, to, to find who to mark. They make it very difficult also for the goalkeeper to find space to maneuver to collect that ball. And I guess that uh, it's a tactic that um, has been worked out at the training ground and it's working uh, brilliantly for Vipers in getting them this lead. Some players are scorers or great scorers of goals. Other players are scorers of great goals. Halid Luwadida, he is a scorer of great goals. Goals that have a big impact in the grand scheme of things. And once again, when needed the most, the captain chooses. In particular, I think they've been helped by also the failure of other teams. Well, player brought down in the box area, and that will be straight to the spot. I think there's there's a reason they call him the hitman. The excellence of execution and the fans indicate automatically that the hitman is ready to execute here. And he was brought down in the box area. That gives the chance to Viper Sports Club to double the tally. Yunus Junior Center move stays on the ground. There was some real slick movement in there. 
and Hood Mlichi brought him down. You shouldn't really have gone in that clumsy. In. You shouldn't dive in at that particular moment. You shouldn't just keep on your feet close down the man. You, 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 there's no reason why you need to dive in like Hood Mlichi just in there. And, and it's a penalty for me. No question about it. Yeah, coach, oh. He's pulling away the captain. Thanks um, for a very interesting perspective in there. Yeah. As the referee calls for the medical team here. Benjamin Yakojo urging the players to calm down has a chance to defy the Emperor's edict. See Zamanzoki lines up for this one straight into the back of the net. With the trophy so close at hand, the purism with which they envision the game as Vipers has totally changed. And at Valois, this is the Venoms. Hungrier, faster, ruthless, almost bordering on maniacal. They just cannot be stopped. They just won't be denied. The Emperor has his reign continued. Yeah, of course. I, it's, it's very clear that uh, looking at the hunger that they have and the confidence uh, that they want this more than um, you are air playing, but you can see that foul. And, and I think that, uh, you know, Santamu, with his injury record, that knee problem, you think that uh, he probably was um, really, really affected by uh, that tackle that was made up. Uh, by Hudu Muliki, and that's the reason why he went off walking gingerly. Well, in a space of 10 minutes, the tax collectors have been found lewanting. It's never hard. Yeah, never... yeah and that's the Nyakojo. You feel that there's a bit of a clumsiness and uh, casual application. They are coming in uh, from these Vipers defenders. And you know that um, if um, you are a just squad now, like at the stroke of halftime, then you can imagine how it can uh, turn this game on its head. Moment since Manzoki is on the ground, the referee is trying to make sure that he gets him back to his feet. Looks like he'll have a bit of a limp in there. But, uh, must have had a bit of a uh, match there with Benjamin Yakojo. What was that? <laughs> what? Play acting. Yeah. So, options go for the shot, could go for the cross. Either way, a very good position. Saidi Cheyuneski, Serubini! Powered that well, just refused to dip down at the right moment. It was a very decent free kick taken there. Yeah, that's a, a, a nice attempt coming from Serbia. Just that the ball draws in, brought in by Saidi Cheyune. Fabian Muchobora fumbles with the ball. And the referee takes the fact that uh, he went into traffic there. Maybe he was impeded, and that's the free kick that's awarded here. Each is already on a yellow card. Looks like he was the player that once again was the impediment but uh, in all fairness he had a chance to challenge for that goal yeah I exactly but i think the thing is that uh, the rules oh, take clear away <laughs> set up front here for the hitman yunus junior centamo skips past his but here comes a corner brought in brushed away it was a decent chance there for milton carissa but he's still trying to get a way to break through this one and here comes mr software jackson nunda pops the long ball up front here Cromwell rothomio is in space but takes too much time to set up that ball and the opportunity goes he just could not bring it under control quickly enough mr bang and that's a missed chance to bang the ball into the back of the net. But look at that pass by Nunda. And that is what we talk about, intelligent play. In players who really understand the game. He just saw that move. He played the pass into the pass of uh, Chromo Rotomio. But the pressure that was coming in from uh, the man there, Hilary Mukunda. Talk about um, any sort of flow in their games. Just been about take the ball and keep it in the opponent's half. And make sure that you are aggressive enough to tackle your opponent. Well, here's the breakaway from the hitman. You know, set him he hits the bar, but the excellence of execution, Yunus Junior Santamu puts the body to the back of the net. You risk this very same problem every time you get a long ball up front. And once he has his laser scopes with you in the crosshairs, his own safety will come as a secondary concern. He will beat you, put you to the ground and then figure out what part of his body hurts. I guess it was all clear that once uh, Yunus Sentamun got that stride in and uh, rest uh, past um, the defender Hudu Muliki, the outcome was inevitable. We know that um, his is uh, very important when it gets to one-on-one -on -one situations. But just look at the header there. And that, that's really, really poor defending coming in from Hudu Muliki. He just didn't have any kind of legs left in him. And it made it very easy for Yunus Sentamun and who just got off um, 
exactly there if you see the way he collided with the post the there. impact of the post is uh, really telling but that is the spirit of a true hitman went in absolutely no concern for himself look at that right next to the knees gets onto his feet confirms it's a call give thanks celebrate to the teammate and then he don't oh ah, I'm actually human it hurts yeah you can <laughs> line up knock them over like 10 points. <laughs> you get a feeling that somehow it's just been a case of uh, Vipers just scoring the goals. In terms of uh, the way the two teams are played, you may not see so much distinct differences in terms of the way they've played. The whole thing is that um, this Viper side has been quite ruthless when they've got into the penalty area. Not that they have um, dominated play by any stretch of the imagination. Carelessness there. But Nunda had nothing to do here. He already made that run. He's already committed. And I think he actually played admirably well, not actually attempting to shoot because he would have had fun here. Perez gets it up front here for the Emperor. Cesar Manzoki has space to burn. And there's a good run coming in from Yiga who maintained the run. But Nyakojo Benjamin is hacking away at that one. Milton Carissa with the right presence of mind, realizing he was offside and deciding not to go for the ball anyway. Yeah, he had gone early. But you could see that uh, from the time that um, Najibika was making that really hard ruling season. But that will be a discussion that might be delved into a little longer when it gets to Saturday when they do encounter the team known as KCC. But for now, the goals from the hitman, Yunus Junior Sentamu, who made sure he put the final nail in the coffin, the straw that breaks the back, the final bullet that put out the tax collectors complimenting that first goal from the captain who opened the goal scoring and led the way by example Halid Luwanida opening the first one and of course the ever reliable and in form wielding the scepter of power Emperor Caesar Manzoki managing to get another goal here in what has been a one-way traffic annihilation of the tax collectors it's full time at the arena of vision in Ndeje it's URAFC nil, Vipers Sports Club 3.